Hi guys, this is Colera Hudson of While They Play Designs, and today the video that I'm going to be showing you is how to do the I-Cord cast-on. On this particular cowl, uh, this is the Desert Poppy Cowl, one of my designs. Um, you can download the pattern. Uh, I'll go ahead and give you a link on the description in this video. But to show you, the I-Cord cast-on is just this beautiful little tubular edge. Looks just like an I-Cord has been seamed onto your cowl. But there is a way to do this so that we create the I cord and then we have the row of live stitches so that we can go ahead and create our pattern that we're working on. So in order to do this, this particular cowl is worked in the round. So go ahead and use the actual needles that you're going to be using for your project. I have 24 inch circulars here. And the yarn that we'll be using is a worsted weight. And this is actually, if you want to know, Knit Picks Comfy Worsted and Rose Hip. It's the color that I used for the Desert Poppy Cowl. Now for this cast on, normally with an I cord, you may already know, you actually cast on your stitches on a short straight needle. That way you can push them to the end knit those stitches and then slide them to the end of the needle and continue to knit them in sort of a little tube creating the eye cord but for this cast on we're actually going to use the circular since we're knitting our project in the round and the first thing you'll want to do is create a slip knot and I actually just do a little twist in my yarn like so to secure the yarn and we're going to cast on two more stitches using long tail. So now we have three stitches to begin with. And like I said, normally with a regular I cord, you would go ahead and slide them to the end of your straight needle and knit them. But since we're using a circular, we're just going to grab our left hand needle, get our tail out of the way here. Okay, so we will slide those three stitches purl wise onto our left hand needle. This first part might be a little tricky since these are just our cast on stitches. So go a little slow here. Okay, now we're going to insert our needle into our first stitch. You're going to tighten up your working yarn here. Knit in that front loop, but do not remove the stitch from the needle. Now we're going to swing around and insert our needle through the back of that first stitch and knit. So basically we've done a knit in the front and the back of our first stitch and we've increased a stitch. So pull that off and then knit your next two stitches that are left just as normal. Okay, so we've increased one stitch and now we're going to repeat that step. So slide three stitches onto the left hand needle purl wise knit into the front and the back of the first stitch. So tighten up your yarn here, front and back. Pop that off the needle and knit your two stitches that are left. So you can see this is a little slow going, but after a while you're gonna get the hang of it. Slide three stitches, always three stitches. Always increase in the first stitch, knit in the front and the back pop off and knit two. Okay, so after a while we're going to have a set of live stitches. It's kind of hard to see at this point, but we have our, our pretty little eye cord here at the bottom and then we have a set of live stitches above. And what we're going to be doing essentially is creating this cast on all the way around this 24 inch circular. So it does take some time, but I think you'll find that it really pays off because it's such a pretty little edge to our work. So again, knit in the front and the back and knit two. Very simple. You'll find that this is something, this is a cast on that you can do in front of the television or while you're visiting with someone. It's, it's kind of hard to lose, lose your place on this particular cast on. I am going to knit a ways and then I'll show you 
you can start to see already how it's forming. And I'll show you how to decrease when you get to the end. But one tip that I want to share with you guys um, that'll really help is to have nice pointed needles for slipping your stitches and also some slippery needles. These are um, Knitter's Pride Rosewood, so they're nice and high polish. But you can also use needles. Um, Addy Turbos work really great. I find that the metal is just a little too slippery and these rosewoods are a nice compromise because they stay nice and warm up against um, the cotton that I'm using and my hands, but they're still nice and slippery and smooth. Okay, so I will go ahead and finish that cast on and I'll meet you at the end when I'm done. Okay, so we've reached the end of our cast on here. You can see the little eye cord that we've created along with our set of live stitches. And in my pattern, I say to cast on 121. Whatever pattern you happen to be knitting, go ahead and do one extra stitch um, in addition to the original cast on. So for this neck warmer, there's 120 cast on stitches, so I'm going to do one extra. So that's a total of 121. And I'll show you why I do this in a second. So place those three stitches back on the needle. Increase the first stitch by knitting in the front and the back. Knit two. And I've already counted all these stitches on my circular. I have 121. And now what I'm going to be doing is sliding the last two stitches purl-wise onto my left-hand needle. And I'm simply going to knit those together through the front loop. There we go. The reason I do this is it just gives a little better shape to the end of the I cord. And then we have our last cast on stitch just above here. That way, when we join our work in the round, and you'll, of course, want to make sure that all your stitches are laying correctly, facing the right direction. And by joining the work in the round, we're simply going to begin knitting our pattern. So all of the stitches are facing the right direction here. Okay, and just grab your working yarn. And in order to join the work in the round, you're just simply going to start knitting. So if you're doing knit stitches or purl stitches, just cinch up your working yarn insert it into your first stitch that's live and simply work that stitch. And you'll see here we have quite a bit of a gap between where we started our eye cord cast on and where we ended it. But what we'll do when we're done knitting our garment and casting off in whatever method you want to use or binding off We'll come back and I will show you a way to seam the beginning of the eye cord to the end of the eye cord so that it seems completely seamless. And if you take a look here at this one, it's very difficult to see where exactly it's been seamed. There we are. There is our seam. So it's pretty seamless. But I will be showing you how to do that. I'm going to knit a ways and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to make that seam. But I'm going to go ahead and show you how to seam up the I-cord cast on as well. So we've left a little tail here, six to eight inches. We're going to go ahead and weave that tail through our tapestry needle. And instead of a large eye tapestry needle that has a very blunt edge, I like to stick with one that has a pretty good point on it. That'll allow us to get in and out of our knit stitches easier. So again, it's coming from the right side of the eye cord. We're going to insert our needle in the left side. And if you take a look here, you can see first locate your stitches of your eye cord. We've got this knit stitch, which appears to be upside down. And then our second is actually on the back, right here. So locate the first part. 
can be a little tricky. Here we go. Go through the left and right leg of that knit stitch that's upside down. Pull your working yarn through. Now we're going to swivel around to the beginning of our I cord. There is the first knit stitch. Make sure I'm in frame here so you guys can see. There's the first knit stitch. So we're going in through the right and the left leg of that knit stitch. If you swivel around, you can see the second knit stitch that we're going to go into soon. So it's similar to a Kitchener stitch, but not really. <laughs> okay, so we've gone through this, this knit stitch and then this one, and we're going to rotate back to the beginning of our I cord. And if you pull on your yarn, you can see we went through this knit stitch. So we're going to swivel back to the back of our I cord. And there is our second knit stitch of our I cord that's upside down. There it is. So going through the left and the right leg, pull your yarn through, then rotate your work again, and we're going to locate that second stitch of our I cord at the end here. So this was our first knit stitch. There's the second. It can be a little tricky to locate these stitches at first. So this is why it's important to have a point to your tapestry needle. It's kind of hard to get through these stitches at first. Oop. There we go. And the fuzzier your yarn is, the worse this can be to find. Okay. And then pull through. Okay. So we have seamed up our I-cord. And again, it's pretty seamless. Of course, it's going to be hard to mimic the beginning of an I-cord to the end. So that's why we tried to tried our best to re recreate those knit stitches. And then again, just as we did before, we'll go ahead and go to the inside or the wrong side of our work and simply weave that tail through, through your work until your tail disappears. And by just kind of meandering through your piece in and out of these little stitches, it'll make it harder for that tail to pop out. Because the last thing we want is for our stitches to unravel on us when our knitted piece is complete. Okay, so I think that's enough. We have a short little, like an eighth of an inch tail there. Okay, and we're done with our tapestry needle. And again, you can see that's where our seam is, or you can't see. And that's, that's the whole point of this. You, you want it to be pretty seamless, pretty invisible. It's really hard to tell where that I cord begins and ends. So I hope that helps you guys. Thanks for watching.